tough questions, new insights, diverse perspectives. Welcome to Questions of the Day with Fanuel Muindi. Um, thank you so much for taking a few seconds of this conference to chat with me. Yeah, no problem. So tell me about your connection to STEM Noir. How did it start and where is it now? So I actually connected with the STEM Noir community via Zoom first. So <laughs> during the pandemic, I, I want to say I was probably a second year grad student. So this was like 2021. Mm -hmm. It's COVID, everybody's inside. Um, and then I go to, um, I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Notre Dame, which is a PWI. So we have no black faculty and my cohort, I don't have anybody else that looks like me. And I was like, I need some type of community. I need someone where I can ask about advisor relationships and not have to worry about code switching or right. if they understand, like I'm trying to go and do field research, what I do with my hair, you know, <laughs> things like that, that I can't necessarily ask my non-black colleagues about how to navigate the academic space. Um, and so it started out with Wellness Wednesday. So they meet every, I think the first Wednesday of every month. Uh, and if there's different topics and themes, and I just, it, it, it always turned into event sessions <laughs> at the end where everybody would talk about, you know, what was going on with their grad school experience and, and just a, a safe space. So wellness is a key component, right, of STEM mm -hmm. Noir. In fact, it's in the description. Why is that important? So, I mean, the spaces that we're doing our science in the STEM field was not made for us. You know, it was systematically designed for people like myself not to thrive. And so uh, having a way to take care of your mental health, um, your personal well-being, all that kind of information and advice, like I've just gleaned from others mm -hmm. with similar life experiences. So it's been nice to like talk to other people that are even further along and like can kind of help me navigate and you form a lot of like informal mentor mm -hmm. relationships. Um, and it's just helped me find like resources even, like I got a grant for therapy. So um, Alicia, she usually, Dr. Franklin, she usually does the Wellness Wednesdays mm -hmm. and through her podcast, Research Her, I was able to get a grant that helped me yeah, <laughs> with yeah. deal with all the stress and uh, get through that it's all in a positive way. I was at a, um museum, art museum yesterday here in Puerto Rico. And one of the themes, actually the, the exhibiting theme there is transformation. That was the title, transformation. And it kept me, just today I was wondering, there are transformations that are probably taking place right here. You know, um, what do you think those might be? And what do you hope that they would be for women that come to spaces like this Actually, specifically STEM Noir. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. yeah, I think there's a lot of transformation. So mm -hmm. just from like today's keynote in the morning, like learning mm -hmm. how to be comfortable with change in your mm -hmm. career mm -hmm. and pivot, given that all of us are, when you're in STEM, you're like, go, 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 go. We're all very driven people. But knowing that when you take the time to feed into ourselves or take whatever time we need from work and go at our own pace so that we can be the most successful and well right. um, has been something that I've already taken away and it hasn't been very long. Um, so I think all these little gems that we get from the different presentations research wise, like if you're learning a new method that you can use in lab, uh, the connections you'll make, maybe you want a job somewhere and there's someone here that works in that industry. Um, all of those things are going to transform us as professionals and as individuals. What is your hope for the future, STEM Noir, 10 years from now? 10 years from now. <laughs> well, hopefully, I'm a PhD by then. First of all, very important. First, first we're going to defend. Um, but no, I, I mean, I see the future is it just growing, right? Mm. I think if you saw today some of the great outreach work that's being done to um, not only create the pathway 
for underrepresented and black um, students in STEM to get into those higher positions. But at the like lower levels, like we have teachers here. So making that pipeline and filling in the leaks is what I see our community doing. And so I just, it's gonna be bigger and bigger and bigger every year. <laughs> and then, I mean, more in-person meetups. They've also, they've already started doing some of those. So I see as our membership grows and there's mm -hmm. more people in different places that we just have more of those. And then you can make those mentoring and close connections with people that are close by. You can right. get coffee instead of Zooming, which I understand we have to still <laughs> Zoom because we're in different time zones sometimes. But. Yes, and as far as I believe, there's a speaker from the UK, right, that came yeah. as well. So, I mean, global perhaps, right, in nature. Um, Zoom has been global. We have some <laughs> folks um, in Canada as well in Canada, that okay. usually will hop on the okay. call. And so. Yeah. Yeah. So meetups, I guess, maybe even global meetups. Mm -hmm. uh, and you mentioned that. I'm glad you brought it up that it's really diverse what the presentations here are about, right? Given the diversity of people that are coming, there are teachers and people who are talking about sleep physiology. There are people who are talking about science outreach, like mm -hmm. the science of science outreach. Yeah. You know, I was just on a poster just now. Science demographics. Uh, science demographics. And then I do fisheries ecology, which is very different than what You're a lot of people do. You're an ecologist, exactly. And so biochemists are here, chemists mm -hmm. are here. So I think one potential future is that those areas, even within STEM lab, begin to grow. That and now you have distinct camps, sub even with subgroups within yeah. that. You know, entrepreneurship too, right? Within this space, how do you do that? And I know tomorrow there's like a resume workshop as well, and I can only just imagine more specialized workshops in the future. So. Um, I, we can keep talking all day long. I mean, we that's really okay. <laughs> I mean, However, if, go ahead. I mean, I think that as like a younger person, mm -hmm. um, just in the STEM fields in general, like I don't think that I would have had as positive a grad school experience or just experience in the field without spaces like this. Mm. I think that captures the essence of STEM noir, and we're going to keep in touch with you. Because we want to hear all about what you're doing <laughs> next and STEM Noir, obviously. Yeah. Um, because at, at SAITV, that's what we care about. We, we want to capture sort of what's going on with civic science and what are people doing. Um, STEM Noir, I think, is going to be powerful in the future for sure. An element, a, a useful element into the ecosystem, right? Um, mm -hmm. So much needed one. So with that, <laughs> see you in a bit.